Welcome to Firehouse Number 6. I'm your host, David Malloy, Director of Public Safety for the City of Novi. And we're very happy to join us here on set. We have Director Jeff Johnson, who's our EMS and Fire Services Director. We have Lieutenant Anne-Marie Mikowaychek, who's a paid on-call fire lieutenant out of Station 3. And we also have Christopher Jodwin, who's a paid on-call firefighter out of Station 4. Welcome, everyone, to Firehouse Number 6. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director. Director, why don't you tell us a little bit about the combination fire department that we have here in Novi that's proven very successful for the last several decades. Yes, we're very proud of all the men and women working for the Novi Fire Department. It's a combination of both full and part-time, and we operate out of uh, four fire stations uh, servicing the public. Outstanding. And Anne-Marie, I know you're an integral part of our command staff down at Station 3. Tell the viewing audience a little bit about your background, your full-time background, but also your background here with the Novi Fire Department. Uh, my full-time background is uh, probably the person that uh, no one wants to see, which is the auditor. Uh, I do securities audits during the day uh, for anyone who sells stocks and bonds. Uh, I cover everything east of the Mississippi is my territory. Um, and then at night, I'm a lieutenant firefighter for uh, paid on call and most of my responsibility is mentoring all the new people coming on board. Perfect. And, and how long have you been with the Novi Fire Department? Um, I'm probably going on my 22nd year now with the Novi Fire Department. Fantastic. And obviously your dedicated service is, 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 a, is a, a testament to the commitment that our paid on call firefighters have. Christopher, tell us a little bit about your background. You're in a place that's not all that unfamiliar with you here in, in the city of Novi. Well, not at all. I'm, uh probably one of the younger members of the Novi Fire Department. I've been with Novi for four years now. Um, and uh, in addition to my paid on call firefighter responsibilities, nights and weekends with the fire department, I'm a small business owner in the community. So I've grown up in Novi, I, I've seen the fire trucks go by, and just like any small boy, I, I, after high school, I, I saw the posters and I said, Novi Fire Department, I think that would be a, a neat job to have. So I signed up, went through school, and here I am now. And that's kind of one of the big topics of our show today is to talk about how it's so critically important for us to not only maintain, but we saw evidence of that in the last few weeks here in Novi where we did have a house fire where, uh, and, and we do have um, a few fires throughout the year that we have to take that very aggressive and, and sometimes defensive stance against. But the, the point here today is to talk about recruiting and, and the marketing that we're doing and we're actually going out in the community. Amory, talk to, let anyone know who might be interested in, in serving, what are some of the benefits of serving as a paid on call firefighter? Uh, the benefits is obviously bringing back to the community. Um, you feel good afterwards on any incident. Uh, the teamwork and meeting all the new people at the different stations. Uh, the training, which not only helps you on the fire ground, but actually in daily life uh, and just preparing for different situations. So um, that's probably what the most uh, for the firefighting. I know we've recently had a firefighter who was involved in a, uh, a automatic external defibrillator save of someone who was in cardiac arrest. But just prior to that save that he was doing in his, his capacity as a paid on call firefighter, about a week prior to that, he was actually involved in a similar situation at work. So you make a great point of the fact that you get trained in skills that you're not only utilizing to serve the, the citizens of our community, but you're also taking those skills if, if you're on a work assignment in whatever state you're in, CPR, AED, first aid, that's something that you can just put to work immediately. Absolutely. And Chris, how about you? What would be some of the selling features for, for you to tell young men and women throughout our community who might be considering this type of opportunity? Well, uh, it's really a wonderful job. In addition to, to what Lieutenant said about the gratification you get every day, it's, um, there's a sense of pride. I mean, I, I'm proud to say I'm a Novi firefighter, and, and I could be any citizen. I could watch the fire truck pull up, um, but, but uh, I, I chose to go in and, and sign up and, and to do the job and, and to help out the community and, and help out the citizens and, and all the visitors we have on a daily basis. So there, there's, uh, we are competitively paid. Uh, we, we, do, um, we are paid for our services here in the city, and all the education is provided to us, uh, State of Michigan fire training, EMT basic training, um, and, and those are skills that we use here in the city and, and, and elsewhere. So um, that was a, a nice bonus to, to get here in Novi. Not a lot of communities do that for you. Yeah, it's outstanding. And, and really, when we look at the success of what we've had with the Novi Fire Department, it's been as a result of the fact that we've had dedicated men and women throughout the community who said, I want to serve, I want to give back, and, and this is what I, I want to do. 
Director, I know we have a goal this year and, and we're actively involved in the hiring process and the recruiting and selection. Tell the audience a little bit about what we're looking forward to as we enter into this late summer, early fall season. And we have a couple fire training academies coming up. That's correct. Um, we have a unique uh, relationship with our partners, which is uh, Farmington Hills. Uh, we do a fire academy with them. Um, our goal this year was to try to get uh, about 12 individuals, men and women, that were interested in going through the training, the fire one and two, as well as the EMT, emergency medical technician training. And uh, we also are, are looking forward to uh, starting that program soon. We have a number of applicants that are in the process right now. And uh, there is also another opportunity uh, with a Highland uh, uh, Academy, Fire Academy with Milford. And we're looking uh, to see if maybe we could uh, get a few more individuals for that program as well. So we are still actively uh, looking to try to reach that goal of 12 individuals. And um, it is a, a time commitment on, on people's parts. And, and I'm sure that our uh, firefighters here today can, can tell them that there is extensive training and we continually train. And that w that's what makes them ready and prepared to do their job. And in addition to the firefighter one and two, we would then send them on for their basic EMT training. That's correct. Okay. And what type of time frame are we looking at for anyone who might be interested in that? It, um, you know, it can go anywhere from about a year and a half to two years of training. Um, it depends on how the program uh, schedule uh, gets uh, completed, and, uh, but that's normally the time frame. There's also our, our mentoring program that we do in-house to make sure that they understand uh, how our equipment works and where to find the equipment and be able to utilize that as well as knowing all of our standard operating procedures. And, and Amory, that's really where you and Chris and, and a lot of our other mentors and command officers come into play. Talk to us a little on how you see that relationship, you with a new recruit firefighter, you bringing them in, and, and talk to us a little bit about the value of that mentoring process and training process uh, as you do it out of Station 3. Um, I believe what it does is it takes, it makes it a little more comfortable for the people coming on board where they're assigned a mentor, usually an officer, and we follow their progress through this, uh, the whole um, training, uh, program. training program, thank you, and uh, we keep tabs on it, and it's just working with them always, side by side. Uh, they come in when we're on duty, off duty, uh, both driver's training, going over policies. Uh, what's nice too is obviously uh, everything gets reported up to the director, so he's on top of things too. So we're always moving it along so no one's just sitting in place. Again, I think it makes it very comfortable because they have a go-to person right. also, uh, which again, when you're coming into an environment like ours, you need that. So. Uh, I think it worked well when we instituted the mentoring program for our new recruits coming on. And it's truly an expansion of the training that they've already received through the academy and, and, and through their first aid EMT training, but more of a familiarization of this is how we do it at the NOVI. Exactly. How we do it is important. They're, they're getting the tools and now we're letting them know how we use it in NOVI. Correct. Chris, you recently participated in the last couple of years, and, and what would you see as the value of the mentoring program? Well, like, like you mentioned, the value is in, in Fire Academy, we're, we're taught the, the national standard or the Michigan standard. This is how you put a fire out. Well, Novi is a very unique community, and, and everything that we have here, um, from, from our uh, uh, commercial buildings all the way down to our residential homes and, and houses, and um, the mentoring program shows us the Novi way of doing things. Uh, and it, it gets us familiar with the uh, personnel of the department. We, we get to work with everyone all the way from the director all the way down to fellow uh, firefighters at, at our stations. And uh, it, it kind of uh, weans you into the whole process. It, you're not, we're not thrown right in. Uh, you have to do your job right now. It's, it's kind of a, a slow introduction to the process. Uh, obviously, things take time and you need to gain experience um, on the job and, and that's what the mentoring process does is to bring new uh, firefighters into the uh, the Novi Fire Department. Great, great. And just while we have a, a couple seconds left here, any advice the three of you would give to prospective applicants that might be view watching and viewing Firehouse Number 6 out there? What would you say is one of the selling points in becoming a paid on call firefighter? Well I think uh, it's an extension. Uh, we become family once you join our, our ranks. And so we take care of each other and we look out for each other and we want to make sure that uh, everyone goes home safely. Outstanding. Anne-Marie? Well, what was interesting is I obviously didn't grow up thinking I wanted to be a firefighter. 
and it was just through an open house that uh, I received the information and it became a challenge to go through the classroom and again the, the welcoming of everyone as a family to stay here for 22 years. So. Yeah, that's remarkable <laughs> and, and thank you for your service. Chris, any thoughts? If you see us out in the fire truck, don't be a stranger. Say hello and wave and ask us about our job because maybe it's it's meant for you and this Absolutely. is something you can you can do to, uh, to help yourself and, and the betterment of your community. So great and I'd like to thank all three of you for joining us here on Firehouse number six. And to you the viewing audience, We'll stay tuned and we will be back with Firehouse number six. Additional resources like the mutual aid from the city of Novi at this time. Well, not everyone can be a firefighter. There's a proud few. It's definitely a job that there's times your adrenaline rushes. There's plenty to learn. Lots of things to do and it's great fun doing it. everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Welcome back to Firehouse number six. Joining us here on set, we have Director Jeff Johnson, who serves as our Director of EMS and Fire Operations, as well as Fire Protection Officer Andy Copeland, who serves out of one of our northern stations, Station 2 here at the Novi Fire Department. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, Andy, the reason we kind of want to talk a little bit about our fire inspection program, and, and you've been intricately involved in that for many years, but first tell us a little bit about your background with the Novi Fire Department. Um, my background with the fire department, uh, I've been a uh, Novi fireman for 17 years, uh, seven years as a paid on call part-time, and uh, 10 years as a full-time uh, uh, fire protection officer and inspector. And you, on occasion, you'll serve as a, you're, you're out doing company inspections. Tell the audience a little bit about what that means here for the no, city of Novi and the Novi Fire Department. Uh, sure. All the uh, full-time fire protection officers are trained fire inspectors. Uh, we go out into the field as a company inspection on the engines and squads. Uh, we check uh, every business in the city, uh, either annually or biannually, depending on the schedule. Um, we check them for uh, all uh, hazards, all uh, code enforcement, and all you know, inspection regulations. And that's obviously been very, very successful for us. And in fact, we've had a, a couple of incidents earlier this year where we were actually sent on a, an alarm at, at a couple local businesses. Tell the, tell the viewing public a little bit about how successful that can be in terms of preventing a, a, a just a huge disaster. It, it's, a, it's a huge part of what we do as inspectors too. Um, some of the fire safety systems in buildings, uh, the sprinkler systems, fire alarm systems in buildings um, are designed to early detection. Um, the structure fire you're referring to, uh, what happened was it was a small fire that was contained in the business. Um, it tripped the uh, sprinkler system in the building, which kept the fire under control until we were until we got there. Uh, we received the alarm through a water flow alarm. It's automatically connected to our 911 system. It sent uh, the alert to our dispatch, and then we were we were called. Um, when we got there, the uh, officers that entered the building saw that it was a structure fire in progress. However, the sprinkler system one had protected the restaurant, may, kept the fire down until we could successfully put it out. So it was. We actually had two instances very, very similar to mm -hmm. that within a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it just goes to show the value of that type of suppression system. Mm -hmm. Minor damage, which could have been uh, damaged in the terms of probably three, four, five thousand dollars, but really could have been a total loss in, in terms of a quarter of a million dollars. Yes, both incidents were late at night and um, we wouldn't have received the call for probably uh, you know, upwards 10, 15 minutes, so that early detection system saved both buildings, absolutely. Which director, in terms of fire, 10, 15 minutes, uh, talk a little bit about how, f how quickly fire can spread and, and, and the dangers of that and, and the importance of not only the suppression system, but also other early warning devices that residents and community members might consider putting in their home. Absolutely, um, very um, instrumental in uh, these systems uh, do detect um, any kind of smoke and fire in the buildings, whether or not it's in your home or, or in your business. And uh, 
if there was a fire in, in your home or business, it could grow each minute 10 times. So it's so uh, imperative that you have working systems that um, can um, actuate, alert you, and, uh, and then um, if they're monitored systems, then obviously they alert us, and then we have a quick response to those types of emergencies, and uh, we can uh, keep those uh, fires in check. And I know we have a smoke detector program here where if a, if a resident uh, has financial needs and, and can't afford a, a smoke detector, we, we have several hundred that we'll be willing to give away and install, correct? There is no problem whatsoever with us coming into your home and installing a smoke detector. And uh, all they have to do is uh, give us a call, um, notify us or contact us some way. Um, we will come out to their home, install that smoke detector, make sure it's working. And, uh, and, and we offer a, a variety of other programs as well. And, and I think I remember last year, early on, February to about May, we had, a, I think it was at least five residential fires, and at all five of those scenes, all five of those homes lacked any type of alert system. And, and once that was reconstructed, we were able to donate back and, and work with the insurance companies to ensure that they had an early warning system. We have to have that. Yes, and um, you know, it's unfortunate that those individuals, uh, in, in some cases, they may have had a detector, but they hadn't checked it, didn't change the battery, and they weren't working. And so. Uh, people just need to remind themselves maybe a couple times a year usually we recommend around daylight savings time make a little note on your calendar that uh, you go around and check your detectors and change your batteries so in addition to springing the time forward and falling back in in the fall change those change those nine volts or, or check those uh, hardwired smoke detectors just to make sure that they're working properly exactly That's great Andy, can you talk a little bit more about uh, the role of what the fire marshal does throughout the community? You've served as the acting fire marshal on multiple occasions when uh, Marshal Evans is uh, either in training or, or on vacation. Tell us a little bit about how that works and, and some of your experiences with that. Sure. Uh, the fire marshal's role is pretty unique. Um, he's in charge of the fire prevention division and education for the city. Um, he's also in charge of all uh, fire code enforcement in the city. Um, all of, like I said, our fire marshal has trained all of us inspectors to do field inspections and um, we report back to him any violations that we find. He double checks those, does follow up. Um, he's also responsible for new construction inspections uh, with the building department in the city. He has to work well with, with that department, um, does field work um, with uh, contractors in the field for, for new businesses that come in. Um, we have a, um, a mobilized inspection program that we use on our laptops. Um, to start tracking inspections. Uh, when I was first an inspector 10 years ago, we had to handwrite all of our violations, um, and it was a pretty lengthy process. Now we're able to do it all on computer. Um, it's all paperless. Um, we can track all of our inspections that way. It's a huge help. And just so everyone understands, when we talk about a violation, we're not necessarily talking about a citation or anything like that. No. We're, we're talking there might have been something blocking uh, an egress door Absolutely. or an area. So we're not necessarily citing a violation, there's no fine. We're just Correct. telling that business owner, this needs to be corrected and we're gonna come back out in a week or two. Absolutely, um, anytime that we find a, a deficiency in a building, we give the, uh, the property owner or, or manager uh, 14 business days to comply and, and to fix those violations. Um, some of the violations, we rarely find any life safety violations. In Novi, we have really good businesses here that uh, comply with all of our, our orders and, and the fire code. Um, so some of the violations are relatively minor. Exit signs may be out. Uh, systems need to be serviced once a year. Um, sometimes they're a month or two late on that. So that would be a, a written form, a notice to them to have that uh, inspected and complied with. Another thing that I think we really want the, the viewers and business members, community members to understand is that fire prevention and inspection, that's just one part of our economic development package here in the city of Novi. By having the fire marshal working with developers, working with our economic development director, new businesses that come in, we want to make it as business friendly as possible. And I know the fire marshal's office has done a great job at sitting down with prospective build business owners and developers to say, this is what we need, this is what the code is, this is what was recommended not only on the local level, but also the state level. And, and we've certainly seen great success in that. Oh, absolutely, yeah. How many numbers are we talking about when we talk about the number of inspections that the fire protection officers do on a yearly basis? Um, well, we ins like I said before, uh, we inspect uh, every business annually or biannually, depending on their occupancy. 
um, and depending on what type of business they are. Uh, general retail could be every other year, uh, whereas a manufacturing facility we may do once a year. Um, I think year to date we've done over 2,300 inspections. Um, we, we found uh, just over 700 um, violations that, that, were, that are being corrected. Um, so it, it's pretty extensive. Um, we operate four stations in the city and uh, we operate those stations in fire districts um, and those uh, fire protection officers in those districts stay in their area. They go out and do those businesses in their area. And uh, we do some specialty inspections at the, the Suburban Collection Showplace is having right. a big event. There's obviously a lot of electrical needs up there and we go out there and take care of those. Right. I, I know through inspections we also we have a couple busy entertainment nights throughout the year, mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Day, night before Thanksgiving that requires our men and women to go out and make sure that we're, we're abiding by our occupancy loads in terms Absolutely. of our buildings. And, and I'm, I'm very, very glad to report that we, we very rarely have any problems with that. And mm -hmm. if we do, it, it's something that's easily corrected. So my hat's off to both of you for not only managing that, but participating in that. And the, the work that you're all doing is just one more step in how we're making no buy the homes, the businesses even safer from fire or any type of disaster. So thank you very much. And to you, the viewing audience, thank you for watching. And at all times, please continue to watch Novi Television.